Um, hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, just a quick remark before starting. In, uh, in parallel to this talk in SAL2, there will be uh, the Jekyll's Applebaum second part of uh, systems, system means of the world unite. Uh, there have been some, problem, some problems with the schedule, so it is not going to be displayed probably, but uh, in, in this room instead we are going to have Hack Index X Parliament with uh, SMS done by this R Collective, Tech R, Pro, R Collective, uh, which in, in collaboration with some, exper with some ex security experts uh, hacked the government. Well, the stage is yours, thank you. Thank you. Is this thing on? Thank you. Bravo. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. So we are really excited that we are here and we are even more excited that you are here at 11.30. So welcome. We are Stohoven, Juraj Bednar, Pavel Luptag and Petr Žilka. Some of these names may be fake. And we want to uh, blow your mind first by uh, doing some explosion for the mind. So. Let's see if this works out. There's no sound. There is. Okay. Vysílání České televize napadli hekři. Napojili se do živého vysílání panoramatických záběrů s informacemi o počasí na programu ČT2 a simulovali v nich výbuch atomové bomby. Svůj čin vysvětlují tak, že chtěli simulací atomového výbuchu upozornit na manipulaci s realitou v médiích. Hekři se přes svůj počítač připojili zřejmě k této kameře a iluzi atomového hřibu vytvořili do černé. OK. Thanks. So this is one of the older projects of Stohoven. Um, we try to uh, figure out how people perceive uh, reality that's presented by the media. And uh, we also found, found out the hard way that uh, uh, our cell phones are not pretty safe. So everyone who had a cell phone during that prank on and uh, on their own identity uh, appeared in this nice room and uh, had a short discussion with a judge. So we try to avoid this problem with later projects. And uh, the, the later project uh, was called uh, Citizen K. Uh, it was uh, actually uh, about identities and exchange of identities. So uh, we were researching uh, absurdities of our society that tries to cope with identity issues of their citizens. And uh, we found out that it, it is not easy to go to jail without a, without a valid national ID card. They actually require the ID, ID card if you want to, or not, not want, but uh, in, in this case, um, the, uh, uh, the guy wanted to go there. And um, so this was a direct follow-up to the, to the problem with the identity tracking. And... Um, uh, what the group did is there were 12 guys, they, they took pictures with the same haircut and in, uh, in black t-shirts and they used uh, computer morphing software to create uh, identities or pictures with uh, significant facial features of both of the photos. And then uh, in a uh, few years ago in Czech Republic when you uh, wanted to apply for an ID card you, ne you needed to bring your own photo. So they applied for the, for the ID card using the other guy's identity. So these are the meta identities. And then, um, then, then the members of the group were trying to live uh, uh, for a few months uh, under, under the other guy's identity. Which was 
pretty interesting. Uh, for example, on this picture, um, of course, the question is where the lady sleeps at night, which bed, and uh, okay, so there was a wedding, and the guy on the left uh, wanted to marry the girl, but he didn't have his ID card, so they, they were exchanged. So he was uh, the best man on his own wedding, because you need to show your ID card if you want to marry someone. And the other guy was, uh, yeah, he was actually standing there and married. So, yeah, he doesn't look very happy. Um, they also applied for gun permit uh, traveled to uh, London. London is outside of the Schengen area, so you actually have to, uh, have to use your ID card. Uh, so this proves that the, the new exchange identity worked outside of the, of the uh, Schengen area. So it worked out. And um, the basic idea here is uh, about um, exploring identities and how, how they relate to us. And um, there are some, some problems, of course. So um, it's about exploration. And um, also changing your identity means, or exchanging your identity with someone means that you need to, um, uh, you need to bear a bigger responsibility for him because the other guy could apply for loans in your name and so on. And it didn't work out very well. For example, the marriage is still not invalidated, even though it was shown that it was not done correctly. So uh, there are no safeguards in the system. Uh, that means that uh, they basically assume that it's working well. And if it's not working well, then there are kind of no backup scenarios. So um, go on. Um, yeah, you are okay. Volume, thanks. So, how how we met and how the project uh, called Moral Reform started exactly? Uh, me and Uri, we are not uh, typical artists. We are uh, IT geeks, and uh, maybe two years ago, uh, we met uh, with uh, the the other guys from our group St Stahoven uh, at one conference uh, focused on. Uh, IT uh, freedom against um, internet censorship. At this conference, uh, I showed to the, the to the other members of uh, Stahoven that uh, how how easy it's it's uh, to send SMS text message with a sp spoofed caller ID. In the past, uh, we all knew that it's quite easy to send spoofed text messages with the arbitrary uh, source source number, but uh, these guys, the, these guys, they realized uh, how uh, that, that there is a huge potential uh, for another project, and that was exactly how our new project called uh, Moral Reform uh, started. Uh, about our group, I would like to say that uh, we are a very crazy uh, combination of many people from uh, many different fields. Uh, especially artists uh, and also hackers, and some of us also have some uh, le legal background. And thanks to, uh, thanks to our diversity, uh, we are able to, to make really interesting pro projects. So. Yeah, um, it was interesting when uh, we met Pavel and Uri. Uh, they, they simply showed us uh, something that is totally basic for them. They showed us the, uh, how the SMS spoofing works. It means that you send SMS from your number to uh, from uh, whatever number to another's, uh, and this SMS seems to be sent from number you want. And uh, we got fascinated, fascinated with this uh, technology. And since the moment we have learned about uh, the SMS spoofing, we had in our minds just uh, using it uh, as a direct interference into politicians' communication. Uh, I think it shows a lot about some general frustration, uh, which is widespread uh, in our country. And the Frustration grows from uh, corruption, unpunished malpractice in administration of our country, and so on. Uh, we have discussed for a long time 
uh, different scenarios of the actions, and uh, we have also consulted it with ex-top politicians uh, who revealed us the details of how the parliamentary organization and uh, communication structure works. And we were getting closer and closer, and during the painful uh, process of searching for the final concept of the new action, a view of parliamentary drama had crystallized in front of our eyes. Um, combined, I, I may say heterogeneous or disjunct uh, words, moral reform has become the main thought of the action. In Czech, Republic, in Czech Republic, where the term reform have been abused, and uh, in many ways we put it in totally different contexts, and proposed reform, which, is, which cannot come from outside because uh, our morality is uh, absolutely intimate, intimate and uh, individual. Uh, and we have decided to create an ambivalent image of an atopic, ideal political world by means of an absurd drama. Each SMS we send uh, from one politician's number to another uh, seems like to be sent from all the members of parliament, government, and also the president's Václav Klaus uh, number to another's, and it created a new reality of communication and uh, each SMS re represented a line, one of the lines of the drama. Uh, great opportunity, uh, yeah. a great opportunity uh, to do the action uh, was provided to us uh, uh, by, live, uh, by preparing of live broadcast of defending uh, parliamentary speech of one MP who was accused of corruption. Uh, and during uh, the two hours of, uh, of broadcast, we have sent uh, 585 SMS or messages uh, containing the moral reform. Uh, now, would, I, we would like to uh, show you a short video where you can see a record from the first moment uh, where the broadcast uh, of the broadcast, uh, where we have realized that we are in real direct communication and interaction with the parliament. Leave it. Continue. Yeah, so this is the Czech Parliament, and yeah. this is the speech of some politician. Yeah, here on the right, you can see Karolina Pík, uh, who is uh, Vice Prime Minister, or who was Vice Prime Minister, and on the left, sleeping uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Karol Schwarzenberg, who is already sending a message to Karolina Pík. Watch right, yeah. Téhož dne v noci převzala předsedkyně poslanecké sněmovny oznámení krajského státního zastupitelství v ústí nad Labem sleeping, by the way. o zadržení poslance <laughs> a žádost o udělení souhlasu k jeho odevzdání <laughs> Příloha tohoto dokumentu obsahovala část spisového materiálu policejního orgánu <laughs> 24. května letošního roku vyslovila předsedkyně poslanecké okay. sněmovny podle článku 27 um, odstavec yeah, cool. And here is the message uh, that Karel sent to Karolina uh, during uh, the short moment as, as you can see. <laughs> Observing the current political situation, I realized that I cannot continue this way anymore. We have to do something significant, something that will fundamentally change our society. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, and um, uh, here you can see uh, our members during the action. Uh, uh, pa Pavel is right there, and by the way, uh, you can see. I thought he foreseen that uh, he has foreseen that maybe he will be presenting it here <laughs> because he was wearing during the action the CCC T-shirt. I just like uh, CCC T-shirts, and this just <laughs> pure coincidence that I uh, had this T-shirt during this. Uh, Action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, 
what was the reaction of, of media? Uh, this action was accepted by media quite positively. Uh, and many themes were opened, uh, beginning with uh, the need of such a moral reform in contemporary politics until the critics of abusing uh, the telephone numbers. And there were also uh, some security questions uh, that arise, and uh, maybe Pavel could tell yeah, you more about uh, it. After, uh, after this event, uh, there were a lot of conspiration theories uh, in Czech medias. Uh, for example, that uh, Czech parliament uh, is uh, uh, in his monitor and, and, and uh, sniffed by a special secret agency or special secret program. And, a lot of other, uh, a lot of other uh, conspiration theories, but uh, we just used stupid uh, SMS text message with the, the spoof caller ID. So, firstly, I would like to explain how uh, spoof text messages work exactly. Uh, it's similar, like like SMTP communication, like email communication. So, it's possible to to change or to modif modify uh, from address, like sender and change it to uh, something completely different. In the European Union, uh, it's prohibited uh, to, uh, prohibited to uh, offer such services, uh, but we, we used the service outside of the European Union, and there are a lot of other services uh, in the US, for example. Uh, probably the most difficult part of, uh, of this project was how to achieve anonymity, because uh, during this project, we, uh, we were not sure that we really want, want to publish everything. Uh, and how, how we achieved uh, the anonymity, uh, you know, I will tell something about it. Yeah, so first, we, we are all uh, huge fans of Bitcoin. So we thought that, yeah, we just use a Bitcoin-based gateway. There was fortunately one called T uh, TXT4 coins. But we figure out that uh, it won't allow us to send so many messages. So there's a limit uh, of addresses that, uh, that are used for payment. And after 20 or so messages, it says, sorry, I need a system administrator to add new addresses. You can't send any more messages. So we had to do it the hard way. Uh, I don't know if you try to launder and anonymize money online, but it's really difficult. So we, we were playing with prepaid cards and everything, and we, we were trying to find a gateway that accepted some form of anonymous payment. Um, what we found out eventually is that the easiest thing is to buy a prepaid SIM card, uh, top up the credit with cash. Uh, in Czech Republic, by the way, you can buy a prepaid SIM card without uh, revealing your identity. So it's completely anonymous. You just go to a, to a, like a supermarket or a normal store and you get a SIM card and it works. You just activate it. So we did that. Uh, also, uh, everyone, of course, left their phones at home near the bed. We were all sick and sleeping. Uh, <laughs> according to the cell towers and um, yeah but we still had to had to test the the if if our scripts are working so uh, so during the night before before the event some of us had to drive the bike to some very anonymous location turn the phone on and see if the if it received the fake sms and so on so we we had to test it this way uh, we found out that it's really difficult to achieve real anonymity, and uh, yeah, there's always some uh, risk that uh, we will be revealed. Uh, it turns out that the uh, reaction was quite positive, so uh, we decided to, uh, to uh, basically reveal our identities and uh, so, here's so here's a walkthrough of the website that was released a few days after, um, after, uh, after the event. Uh, so this is how it looks like. It's still online, so you can you can check it out. That that's the structure of the parliament. The the colors are the political parties. On the bottom are journalists, and then there's government and presidential uh, castle or office. And here are the texts. We translated them to English for you. Uh, so uh, you can see all the text messages and the extracted structure of parliament, how they communicate with the press and so on. So here's the president of, of the republic. And all these people were basically the, the, 
uh, actors or, uh, of, the, of the drama. Here's the timeline, so uh, you, can, you can see how the messages were sent. So that's, that's the whole script. And, and I really like the last uh, text that came from the president's office to, uh, uh, to journalists calling an urgent meeting of heads of all parliamentary parties on acceptation of moral reform. And it will be held after today's MPs meeting. And yeah, he basically invited all of them to the castle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that was the first part that was quite uh, positively accepted, and here comes the second part. Yeah. After the first uh, parliamentary round, we have uh, analyzed uh, all the media and also public and politicians' uh, reaction for our, for our action, and uh, it uh, we, we were quite sad of it because worsening political and uh, social situation and also uh, increasing uh, mistrust to our political representative in our country uh, led us to an idea of uh, a simple multiple, meeti multiple meaning and uh, penetrative act uh, in frame of a collective uh, political art exhibition in, uh, in Center uh, for Contemporary Art, DOCS, in Prague. Uh, we have exposed a complete list of uh, parliament, government and presidential telephone numbers and their names. The gallery installation was a great platform to try to cross the borders of normal understanding what, uh, an, uh, what an art installation is or can be. And I think we succeed <laughs> because uh, what followed was totally act unexpected for us. For one week, every day, main political newscast brought new information about publication of numbers and new circumstances uh, which were continuously arising concerning all the action. Um, Here's the phone number of the ex-Czech president, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Media public and the most of uh, politicians uh, simply did not get it. The media image of the action was reduced to information that the politicians' numbers uh, were published, and uh, the politicians uh, were since then heading the blackmailing or m and menaces. Uh, the Office of Personal Data Pro Protection was also investigated uh, whether publishing of uh, telephone numbers uh, is or is not breaking of personal data uh, protection. And uh, finally, they stated that it's not, so uh, an interrogation did not continue. And, uh, but what was, what, was wrong, uh, what was sad for us was that nobody cared about the manifesto and uh, the context of the gallery and also uh, the final view of the installation, because uh, what we wanted uh, we wanted to pose the viewer into the middle of kind of uh, address, address book of uh, the most influential uh, lobbyist in the country and appear for a while in their skin and be able to uh, directly communicate with politicians uh, through uh, the telephone hanging there, which everybody could use to send whatever message he wanted to, whatever number from the, uh, from the wall. Uh, but all the media created uh, their own stories, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, finally one of the reporters called us cowards that uh, we publish others' numbers and hide our own. Uh, imme immediately we have uh, published our numbers on our websites, and uh, here uh, you can see our numbers uh, now, which, are, yeah. which we are using. Feel free to text us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we would like to thank you. Uh, this is the final of this uh, lecture. And uh, now we would be happy to hear any questions uh, from you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, microphone four. How did you get a hold of those numbers, all the politicians in the first place? I yeah. assume they're not just like giving them out in the yellow pages? Yeah, I, I, can, I can give you a very honest answer without revealing much. 
I don't know, <laughs> and we decided not to reveal. So I'm sorry, but it's possible to get them. Well, we can say, uh, and it was interesting that lots of the numbers, uh, of course, not all of them, but lots of the numbers, uh, uh, we were able just to Google. Uh, because uh, lots of the MPs uh, are uh, some representatives of uh, several firms or companies, and in connection with their own uh, business, they sometimes publish their own uh, numbers. And there are also politicians, a uh, few of them, who publish their numbers uh, without any problems, but it's rare. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for a good talk. I have two questions. Yeah. First, how long did it take you to plan out this drama of who says what? And second, did this project affect any kind of change? Did you get the politicians to actually meet up and discuss the issues that you wanted them to discuss? Uh, the first, oh, do you want to? Okay. You can answer the first one. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we, we were still we were uh, searching for the concept uh, for a long time because uh, when we uh, got the opportunity to use the SMS, <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> we're off. Are you yeah. calling me after the talk? <laughs> you are kidding me. Are you calling me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got your number. I will. I will. Uh, no, you will see. Uh, okay. Um, uh, since the moment we, we uh, revealed the possibility to use numbers uh, and, and to use uh, the SMS spoofing in like white, uh, white action in one time, one place, uh, we were fascinated with that and we also were thinking about how to use it. And one of the possibilities was that we wanted to influence getting some um, acceptation of some new uh, laws and so on. But finally, uh, it crystallized after a long time into the moral reform concept. And we, we, we were not in hurry. We, we wanted to have the concept well prepared and so on. But then uh, the opportunity uh, of the parliamentary speech of the MP who was arrested uh, came. Uh, we, we knew that this is the right one opportunity we, we have to use and we have to uh, try to do it. So then we had like limited time of one, one month when we had to really work hard on all the techniques, uh, background and so on, and uh, also the text, text messages and, and yeah. things like that. So it was like one month of very intensive work and about one year of thinking about it and searching for the contact. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, also, what is very important to say is that uh, the, uh, it was not an ordinary hearing, so there were a lot of people who were actually watching the live stream, so people don't usually watch um, broadcasts from the parliament, but this one was special, so, so we tried to use that. And um, you asked um, if we achieved what we wanted to achieve. Um, well, the con if, if, you, if you go through the messages, they're very apolitical. They're not saying that, please do this type of reform or, or something like that. So it's basically just saying, be better and some, some kind of naive, naive things. And I don't think that the politicians <laughs> got better. <laughs> and w what's also very, very interesting is that they uh, never wanted to discuss the content. So when, they, when the politicians were talking to the media, they basically said that, uh, yeah, we received some fake text message from this colleague or that colleague, but they never s or very rarely uh, said what the, what the, the content was. was how uh, it's possible that the operators allow uh, and are, don't have secure gates, yeah. uh, that it's possible to send SMS booking and so on. And these issues were the main yeah. one, but uh, the content was not. So so unfortunately, the, co the content uh, of these text messages was probably the most important, but politicians completely ignore it, unfortunately. So. <laughs> And we, uh, as, as, as Jure uh, said, we, we tried to, to send uh, text messages, very positive text messages. Uh, and that was also a reason that it's quite uh, complicated or difficult to, to sue us when we just send very positive messages to all people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I would really want to see a politician who would sue someone over saying, oh, let's be better and <laughs> work for the people or stuff like that. So. 
it was very naive and possible. Because uh, b b we were thinking also about sending something completely different, maybe not not so positive uh, More text messages. Destructive. <laughs> destructive. <laughs> yeah. Influencing some voting or something. Because uh, this is how the politicians communicate. So there's like uh, head of. Uh, um, political parties or, or clubs of the political parties in the parliament and they communicate how uh, they coordinate how to vote and, and, and so yeah. on. So that was one option, but we really wanted to um, stay on the positive side, basically. Number four. Four. Um, uh, do you, uh, I, I get back uh, to the uh, project of the uh, mixed ID card uh, identities. Um, what I, uh, I, I see on this project that uh, now um, when you are applying for ID card, uh, they photograph you at uh, that point. So, so basically what I see as outcome of your, <laughs> maybe, maybe they would do it anyway, but uh, it could be seen that uh, from your uh, project they just improved the, uh, their um, processes. So, and do you think it is a good thing or not? <laughs> this, uh, uh, maybe maybe I, if you didn't reveal uh, yeah. that uh, that uh, you are using these mixed identities, it would be a, like nice project, uh, and uh, the authorities would not uh, mm -hmm. would not improve their processes. Which uh, I don't yeah. think that uh, it is a good thing. Uh, I also don't don't think that it's a good thing to improve the processes of identification mm -hmm. and this paperwork and state bureaucracy. Uh, but actually, uh, there's, a, um, there's a common format for uh, national ID cards in the EU, especially in the Schengen area. So they were actually working on, uh, on deploying these new things. So we, it's basically just grasping an opportunity to try it out. They, they would do it anyway, for sure. We, uh, actually, we, we too are not citizens of Czech Republic, so we had the funny, nice, new European ID cards anyway, so... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, back to your question. Um, personally, I'm also not a fan of uh, national IDs, uh, but this uh, hack in Citizen K, it was possible uh, thanks to, to the fact that in Czech Republic at that time, uh, when, you, when you ask uh, for a new national ID, you just, uh, you just bring your own photo, yeah. and an uh, officer just uh, takes this photo and, and use it. But it's not possible anymore in Czech Republic and yeah. also in Slovakia because now we use yeah. official European uh, national ID format. So, so the photo is uh, uh, is taken at, at at the place when when you ask uh, for for this national ID. But it's also a very interesting part is the verification process. So if you have two people uh, and you merge their facial features into one photo, um, you mean like. Is an ordinary, I don't know, uh, officer at the police station or at the social security office or anywhere, how they are supposed to know that, okay, maybe I just gained some weight or, or I'm a little bit thinner or something like that. It's, it's really not a good identification of, of a person. And also, uh, I like to think about it in this way that uh, very often you... Uh, when you communicate with the state bureaucracy and, and the system, they actually don't see you. So you're, you're basically a body that's bringing the primary key to their database. And the link uh, of the body and the primary key is very weak. So um, yeah, it, it's raised more questions than answers, I, I believe. Three. Nice project, but isn't the effort gone to spoofing SMS IDs a bit wasted? I mean, surely politicians in opposing parties don't have each other's mobile numbers, and certainly journalists are possibly unlikely to have the president's number, so it would just look like a random text from a, a stranger. Uh, I think your assumptions are very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they do have uh, numbers of politicians from opposing parties, and, po uh, and journalists have... Uh, numbers of, because uh, these are the journalists that are covering the politics, so that when they want to ask a uh, member of parliament or the office of the president something, they, they, they can just text them, so they have, I, I think your assumptions are wrong in this. So that's quite positive. Yeah. So politicians in Czech Republic and Slovak Republic in parliament, they know each other uh, in, on the personal level very well, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for questions. For and uh, there is just an uh, interesting point. Uh, 
there came a message. I received a message from a number ending with 666. And uh, there is a great talk. Thanks a lot. And we thank mm. you too for all this. Thank you very much. <laughs> There was a question in the microphone for. Ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Come on. Um, hi, thanks for your talk. Uh, just real quick, do you think the, your targets realized they were spoofed? Do you think the politicians realized the, the messages were fake during very the... Soon. Very, very soon. Very soon. Very uh, soon? So uh, how, how long did it take? I remember one interview with uh, the Prime Minister, Petr Nechas, uh, who told... I was receiving strange uh, messages, but uh, once I received... Uh, the message from my uh, Ministry of uh, Financials, uh, who is uh, calling me to more reform, I suddenly realized that this cannot be true. And <laughs> 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 this must be some fake. So, <laughs> and actually, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, yeah uh, we are now working on on a short movie from the section, and uh, we had our fellows uh, write in the parliamentary. Uh, room where, where it, all it happened and uh, we were on the phone with him so he was uh, target focusing uh, with the camera uh, always the part where we were sending uh, the messages and there are wonderful moments where uh, all the MPs come together and uh, uh, showing each other what, what they received and <laughs> they are absolutely like uh, confused <laughs> from it. Yeah. So yeah, you, you will see in the future. You can uh, yeah. follow us uh, on our websites on, uh, or on Facebook and you will get the news. Yeah, so, so, so unfortunately, politicians do not receive a uh, positive text message <laughs> message so often. So they, they were able, so thanks to this, they were able to, to reveal it very yeah, but soon. But if you, if you watch the recording, actually, there's, uh, there's a point when they start to whisper and they stop listening to the, yeah. to the guy talking and they're just concerned with their phones. And uh, we were thinking about this, like, how should we make it difficult for them to realize that it's fake? But it was very difficult because there is no like official seating in the parliament. So uh, sometimes um, one one guy was sitting and uh, received a text from the guy sitting next to him. So he, so they just showed the phone and they realized that yeah, uh, yeah that, that's not the case. So so uh, probably one uh, last thing I I forgot to mention is that uh, uh, as as you right uh, um, told us. Uh, we just ex exchange a mobile credit for uh, anonymous text messages. Uh, in these days, it's it's also possible to order any uh, any any services from the internet uh, using prepaid anonymous cards. Uh, for example, in, if you go to Austria, in Austria there is a special prepaid Mastercard anonymous card call, called Cash Cash for Web. And when you when you top up this, uh, so you 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 are able to buy this car with the credit 150 50 euros and you can use it completely anonymously when you want to pay for uh, any online services yeah but we prefer bitcoin based solutions of yeah, course yeah yeah we prefer bitcoin oh by the way if you have some bitcoins that you don't like or like us I, uh, um, <laughs> you can donate bitcoins to so, us on stohoven so. for other cool projects. Yeah, we wanted to encourage our fans and followers to uh, care about Bitcoins, to uh, get an interest with it and try how it works and so on, because in Czech Republic uh, it, uh, it is not very well uh, articulated and uh, uh, the media already starting to pay attention to these issues. Already the rest of the world is uh, living with this uh, for <laughs> more yeah. over two years. Then in Czech Republic it's a new theme, so we want to, uh, wanted yeah, but to the, encourage but our But the fans. On, yeah. only Bitcoin talk on CCC was from a Czech guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. It was a big pleasure for us. Thank you. Oh, this is great. Thank you. Thank you so much.